Hello and welcome to the ECA podcast series. I am Ernest Chicho. We're recording today in the Moroccan city of Casablanca, where a good number of North African journalists have converged for a capacity building workshop on the African continental free trade area. A workshop like this is crucial as it enhances our ability to effectively promote the AFCFTA. For us as journalists, this training has deepened our understanding of the AFCFTA, enabling us to write in a more informed and articulate manner to encourage our leaders to implement the AFCFTA. This training has been incredibly enriching, both in terms of vibrant content and valuable information. Our guests on the program, Walid El Zamor, trade expert from Egypt, and Ali Ndo, a Morocco-based veteran journalist from Senegal. Both of them participated in the media workshop as trainers. One major concern raised by the journalists throughout the training was the lack of sufficient communication about the AFCFTA, as summarized by Algerian journalist Aksin Mouali. I think a lot still needs to be done in terms of communication. For me, it's surprising that I'm just learning about this. In fact, I vaguely heard of the AFCFTA in Algeria, either through a press conference or a government communique, but nothing more. It's strange for a veteran journalist like me not to have heard much about the AFCFTA, but at least coming to this workshop has helped understand more about the AFCFTA, which is an extremely important project. So I'm wondering, why isn't there a lot of noise about it in the media? My personal observation, and my colleagues can attest to this, is that the AFCFTA is perceived as an economic or geopolitical agenda with which the public and media do not identify. What's your first reaction to that comment? It's true, and um, I think this is the responsibility of uh, uh, several parties. But first, uh, this can be uh, achieved by creating benefits. So the AFCFTA, when it will be fully uh, functional and it will create benefits to everyone. By creating these benefits, everyone will know about it. Everyone will, 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 will seek the information, will seek the, uh, how to deal with it and how to benefit from it. Apart from that, I'm sure uh, governments, uh, international organizations, the or, uh, organs, different organs of the African Union, uh, organizations working in the uh, in Africa like UNICA and many others, I'm sure they have a role to play in that. I guess the question is, do you think those entities you just cited, the ECA, the AU, the AFCFTA Secretary, do you think they are doing the needful sufficiently? to sensitize the masses so that journalists of this nature should not complain that they don't know much about the AFCFTA. This is one step that we have right now. This okay. is one step. I'm sure it has to be followed by many, many steps. As a journalist yourself, first reaction, Mr. Ndu. I'd like, first of all, to thank the ECA for this three-day workshop. Those remarks by our Algerian colleagues speak to the importance of this workshop. In fact, noted that prior to this workshop, he did not know as much about the AFCFTA as he does now. Workshops of this nature are essential to help publicize the AFCFTA across Africa. Communication has a key role to play. AFCFTA cannot be left solely in the hands of politicians for it to become successful. It needs public support and journalists have a crucial role to play in creating the necessary awareness. So you're pushing the responsibility back to the journalists. Exactly, exactly. The journalists, journalists must go in search of the news. But information also needs to flow from the other end. It has to be an interactive effort. This workshop is definitely an important step in that direction. Personally, I would have loved to see workshops like this organized at least every six months in different African countries. Okay, we'll come back to this aspect on, of journalist media relations around the AFCFT. Now, you're one of the trainers um, for the past three days. Just give us a brief overview of your interaction with these journalists from across North Africa. The main objective was to, to uh, give a, a wider orientation about the, the agreement, about the history, how we reach it 
the point where we launched the negotiations for the agreement, um, the different components of the agreement and why it is so different from other agreements because it's very, very comprehensive, including trade in goods, trade in services, competition policy, uh, uh, intellectual property rights and many other things. We try to, to teach them how to cook. Uh, not to get food mm. so we try to we went with them through the different sources of information where they can update their uh, their uh, their knowledge on a daily or monthly basis mm -hmm. where they can whenever they need an information they can get it how can they evaluate the the effect of the agreement uh after the application or uh they can compare between the uh, the current situation and later on so in, in, in other parts of the world, the, the media seems to be, has always been historically, at the forefront of national, regional and continental agenda, driving the narrative. That, in my understanding from listening to the journalists of the past few days, is not the case in Africa, meaning the, the journalists don't seem to be occupying that front row seat when it comes to driving the narrative in Africa. The journalists have, for the past two days, been asking many questions about the AFCFTA. This shows that they don't yet know much about it, but are interested in learning. They are not well equipped to help with awareness raising. What should they communicate and how do they access the right information? Experts, politicians and decision makers are usually very difficult to get hold of and sometimes reluctant to talk, especially if they don't have the right information. So, the journalists have highlighted access to reliable information as a major obstacle. This workshop has really helped clarify a few issues about the AFCFTA. One thing that came up a few times was the issue of corruption in the sense that the journalists have observed that truck drivers, for example, have this recurrent complaint about, um, you know, the need to pay government officials at cross-border posts, meaning the journalists would tend to report more on that. Yeah. How do we tackle this? Meaning you don't deviate the attention. I'm not to say it's not an important issue that needs addressing. How do we address it? But also how do we get the journalists to focus on, on the bigger issues, corruption being one of them? Corruption, it's everywhere in developing countries and it's the, the, the reason this question is particularly important is because you i understand you've done some research on the eu model regional integration in in the european union yes. so just picking from that how do you think we can approach this the best thing to fight the corruption is by economic development so every time you go uh you develop more you try to to you will have less corruption and by digitalize the economy by automize the procedures all the procedures by such kind of, of of actions you try to minimize corruptions as much as you can um, what i'm really we're really missing in our media and in our is the the value added uh ideas and uh, uh issues that ha that is being raised in the media for example in, in the Western, the media play a very, very important role. They also, they, they initiate a lot of uh, very important issues and crises. Then the, the, the main, the ignition was from the media. Then it comes, it has been really uh, dealt with by the governments. In our countries, it's not really the same. So we really have to have a capacity building for our uh, journalists or so, so they can really uh, discuss you know like to get them interested yeah. in yes this. yeah you, you are a journalist so, so talk to us about this dr walid sounds very optimistic on this corruption issue i think it's something that can be addressed over time if we are well organized and determined transparency international for example places african countries at the bottom of rankings on corruption this tells you that corruption is real in africa our leaders must work hard to fight it Otherwise, we will not be able to integrate and trade with each other when the systems are not trustworthy. So, as he said, corruption is not exclusive to Africa. That's right. Other parts of the world have managed to, you know, move on with development, regional integration, 
corruption notwithstanding as a journalist is there a good way to report corruption and AFCFT how do you handle that it is your responsibility as a citizen of the continent as well the role of the journalist is to denounce such practices especially where there's reliable information on corruption this should draw the attention of leaders and the business persons on the field that said I think it's also a matter of narrative because not everything in Africa is negative. It would be counterproductive for us to focus solely on this one aspect. Dr. Walid just told us that corruption is everywhere in the world, not just in Africa, but there's a problem of perception. We must combat corruption, but I don't think we, as journalists, should focus solely on it. One thing that Mr. I said it was, uh, I think it was very interesting, mm. is that transparency. Uh, when you have transparency from different parties, I mean, the government, uh, um, you know, uh, say that, yes, we, we, we know that there is a corruption in, in, on the borders. And so normally media will tend to go to things that it's not, it's really hidden and it's not really unknown. But mm. when it's, I mean, of course, this is the first step to fight the corruption. Right. I think by this, by doing this, it's the transparency from media and from officials. I think things will, will get better. If I may add, being a journalist by training, you're aware that in journalism, the arrival of a train on time isn't considered news. However, it becomes newsworthy when the train is late. We should not always give a negative image of Africa. There are positive things that must be reported as well. Okay. Now, where do journalists find data on the AFCFTA? You made a presentation and you, you, you talked about um, the need for journalists to go beyond the conventional, the usual um, um, government ministries and government officials where they go to source information to look beyond that and kind of touch based with institutions like the ECA. I think the issues of data sourcing and communication are very serious. You probably noticed that we devoted the bulk of our time during the workshop to data sourcing. The journalists are in need of information, but they do not have sufficient access. Experts and leaders in many of our countries do not really communicate, even on basic issues of interest to the public. I also noticed, for example, that the ECA has published lots of reports which have not been well circulated. An example is the report on value chains, which I only discovered this morning. Well, research and rich content that journalists can benefit from. So content creators should communicate better and journalists should also do a better job of digging for information. I think the ECA or the AFCFTA Secretariat should try to improve communication between experts and the media. As stated earlier, the lack of communication will slow down progress in the AFCFTA implementation. I think this is something we have to pay great attention to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really easy. There is different sources, but it's not really easy to get a complete information about uh, a topic or a subject or uh, uh, some some data that you want. I'll give you an example. When we signed the agreement, there was five initiatives to support the the application of the agreement. All complement each other, and it all like has portals online that will provide data on uh, trade barriers, on uh, trade uh, statistics, something like this. But if you look to this, two or three of these portals right now is not really functioning. Mm -hmm. Uh, beside, the, if you go to the website of the Secretariat, some of it is working very well, but I mean, we are still missing on the Secretariat website a lot of very, very important information. Mm. This is something we cannot blame the journalists for, but this is something that we really have to take care of. And my belief is that uh, financial capabilities is not really an excuse not to have this because it's very, very important. Mm. One, one thing um, I heard one of the journalists uh, talk about in line with data, and I think it was during your presentation, they talked about um, the language that's used, the presentation, lots of graphs um, that's difficult for them to break down. You as an expert in the field, how do you simplify your communication? Because it's one thing to avail them with the data, 
It's another thing to make it in a way that they can easily understand what is it you're trying to communicate so they can further disseminate. I totally agree. This is the best way to communicate, not even with the journalists, with the, the, the public, with the normal people. Uh, it, it makes it very easy. You don't have to, to read the, a lot. The message is very, very clear. Still, unfortunately, not many source of data has these options. Mm. Uh, but we rely on Unica, they have a, they, they, they do a very good work on that. Uncta, they do a very good work on that. So I hope by time it will. Uh, but this kind of message, it has really to be, be very, very clear. I know this kind of, uh, of data. Okay. On this aspect, it's true that the AFCFTA is very technical, so we need workshops like this to help journalists understand. So, Dr. Walid's presentation, for example, is something journalists should go back and study for better understanding. We can't dump it all on you. We, as journalists, need to cultivate and develop our reporting skills on economic issues. All right. well, thank you very much. Any last word for the road? Yes, uh, we are um, at a historic point. Mm -hmm. I mean, by achieving the uh, African Continental Free Trade Agreement, uh, I'm sure the effect on the agreement on the, the whole continent is huge. And we have to benefit from every part of it. And we have to work hard to, to minimize the disadvantages or the negative effect of the agreement. So. Final word? Final word. Uh... My final word is to thank the ECA for this wonderful initiative. I think it's the first time we are having such a media workshop on the AFCFTA in North Africa. It's a first of its kind. If other entities can take after the ECA and organize similar workshops, I think that will be very important. Yes, uh, such kind of an event is very, very important for right. the media. And it will be very, very important to open the participation for online uh, journalists who could not come. Or, of course, there is a limited capacity for the room but it's very, very important to, to reach as much as we can from journalists around our continent, especially in the North of Africa. Perfect. Final word from me is thank you to you thank very you. much. Thank you. And thank you to you. Thank you. Thank you. It's thank a very good uh, job you have. Thank you very much. And I wish I could reach out to, for a handshake with you as well, but that's the end of our program. Thank you very much indeed for watching and keep well. Mm -hmm.